work the agenda revisions. Uh, public comments or correspondence. Any executive committee comments? I have a motion to approve the minutes of February 14th, 2018. Move. And a second. Second. Any discussion? I didn't have any particular notes. Do you have anything on the last minute? Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Discussion agenda 2.1, supervisory board reorganization. <clears throat> um, currently, I'm the chair, Kari's the vice chair, and Matthew is the clerk. Um, I cannot uh, continue. I've reached the term limit, and since it's not Russia, I can't uh, <laughs> change all the limits. Um, so uh, for a reorganization, I not, cannot be considered the chair. Um, but would entertain motions uh, for the new chair of the executive committee. I'll nominate Matt Okay. Uh, second that. I'm sorry, you seconded? Carhari. <laughs> Any other nominations? Then I'll instruct the secretary to. Um, you can do it either way. I will just vote, and I don't need to remember what that language is. No, I tell you what it is. You can instruct the secretary to pass one ballot. One ballot. One ballot for. Cool. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed abstentions. And typically, I would ask, but all the boards have heard that you're interested, Matthew. So. Yeah. Um, for vice chair. May I just give you a, a point? I think you're doing this for the executive, but then there will be a recommendation. This is just the recommendation. Oh, this is right. Executive okay. committee. I didn't hear you the say the word recommendation. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Chris is running in at this point. So our recommendation for vice chair. We're happy to continue. Here, we'll to continue. Has there been much of a left? Is there a second for Kari to no, continue second. as vice chair? Second. Any discussion? We're voting for a vice chair and Kari, who's a recommendation to the full board. We're making a recommendation that Kari be voted as vice chair. Are there any other? This may be smooth spice for that. Okay, so all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed abstentions. And Matthew was the clerk, so we need a new clerk. The, the requirement of the clerk essentially is when we do an executive session, um, take the notes that are required when we come out. And there's occasional signatures required on. Well, we don't we don't take out the um, so. I, I can't remember when we've seen the signature, but on some documents. Occasionally, the clerk. Yeah, maybe just working on a bank statement or something. I think it happens twice a year. New accounts. New accounts. Sorry. I think it happens twice a year. Twice a year, yeah. So, we're, is there a nomination for a clerk or someone willing to step forward? I'll do it temporarily until I find I can't do it. <laughs> Or, you know, I decided this more than I want. No, once you accept it, you're worthy. <laughs> <laughs> I could just not do it. It's a wheel of this <laughs> Is there anyone else? A second for Dorothy? I'm not second. Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed abstentions. So the recommendation <clears throat> uh, in can either be made as a slate or individually. I think typically the recommendation is we do it as a slate. But the executive committee recommends Matthew, chair, sorry, vice chair, and board takes. So, so that, that's what will happen at the very beginning of the SU meeting. And then the treasurer needs to be added to that slate? Yeah, we've always done very honestly as our treasurer. Mm -hmm. 
So Mary Ormsby was elected as the Callis um, treasurer as well as U32 at town meeting. And she mentioned, I think, both of us this week, yeah. she's interested in continuing. Yeah. And she's always done it. She's been doing for, for it as, uh, since Florence passed away, and she's been doing it for 20 something years. So, yes, she's our second treasurer ever. <laughs> <laughs> Does that need a nomination? Um, I just want That's to make sure it's on the slate. The SU board needs Could, to. Yeah, why don't you? Okay, <laughs> if you just add it to the slate, would that make sense, Bill? Sure, why not? Yeah. Mary Moon, please. True. Mary Moon, please, as a treasurer for the. And I'll SU. second. I'll second. Oh, can mm -hmm. I get your name? I'm sorry. Oh, Chris McBeth. Chris McBeth. Yeah, M C V E I G H. And that is for Mary. And if anybody knows the spelling of the last O R M S B Y. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed abstentions. Have we completed our recommendations? I think so. I think so. One of the things I should have asked you, Stephen, is up in the re agenda revisions, I have a question for you. And then uh, we can decide if it's something What's we want. it pertain to? Calendaring for the SU committees. I don't know if you want to tackle that under calendar. Sure. Or something like that. I don't think it's an agenda. We'll just add it okay. to that discussion. Okay. Anything else under reorganization? <clears throat> so 2.2. The school calendar, it's on page five of your packet. Well, they're pulled by Kari. It's just because that's pertinent to this discussion. <clears throat> is what you have pertinent before the discussion? Or yes, before the discussion on page Wait, five. Yeah. On page five, you'll see the calendar that has been. Um, Put together with the Central Vermont Career Center. You might think of that as very tech. So you will see that calendar. This is for the school year right now that I'm talking about. For next school year, um, it has. We have to have 175 days in common with the Central Vermont Career Center. This has 179 in common. The only day that's not is the first is. Friday, February 8th, they are taking a school develop, a staff development day, and we tried that in other years, and we found we stopped doing that this year and found that it's better to use it at the beginning of the year. Um, you will also see that um, that we our last scheduled day is the 14th of June, and then the next five days would be held there to the 21st as contingencies for snow days. Um, and the graduation would be on the 14th of June. Having it later is definitely helped. And this year is really key that we're a week later. It's, um, we would be looking for a waiver this year if we, and we have one day left to go that we don't have to ask for a waiver for the seniors. If we have another snow day, I'll be writing a letter to the secretary, to the state board, asking for a waiver on well, the number of days of, that we're in attendance. Even though we have 180, we must have 175. So, um, it pretty much is the same pattern as this year. Um, at some point, and we can talk more about this in the future, and that's why I put my piece in, the, um, in my report about how we use time, how we're calendaring. I don't think it really works for, and I think I can speak for the leadership team because we've had a lot of discussions about it. It's not working for a proficiency based learning environment that we're moving into. Oh, the current calendar? Yeah. It's not. It's not. It's an inquiry calendar that, and Chittenden County a couple of years ago tried to change it so there were quarters and then chunks of break, like a week or two weeks of break in between, that there was not. There wasn't to there wasn't acceptance of that. Um, I mean, it was community wise because people are so set with this type of calendar and how they structure their lives outside of school. Um, <coughs> but it's this is not the best calendar for kids for learning. I'll just and other states have changed their calendars to try to do that. Not New England, not in the Northeast, but if we were in the Southeast or Southwest, you would see changes in calendars. Is there any corresponding corresponding change in uh, student performance based on the change in the calendar? I'm not sure. I have not gone to look for any of that research. 
but I don't know either way. That would be the selling point, I think, in, in terms of you're saying it's not best for optimal learning. Well, we would still be bound to the tax center. That tax center. Maybe, but no, we no, don't. It's not, it's not. We no, don't. no, what I mean is oh. that if their students were doing better too, I assume <coughs> they might, unless they're bound to an agrarian calendar for some technical reason. We're bound to that the five supervisory unions that flow into Barry Tech have to have the same 175. But my point is, I wonder whether their educational um, delivery service or what they deliver needs the calendar that they have now, or whether they would be amenable to Could they going to more of a quarterly system. As so well. I don't think I think you'd have no argument from the superintendents. Okay. You'd have no argument from them. It's the cultural piece, and the reason I bring this up is when we think about school start time and other work that we're doing. There are other things by just besides just starting looking at start time that affect learning. Mm -hmm. Longer school days uh, definitely can you know and it doesn't mean that you have to really have to go change master agreements. I mean, things can be staggered, so don't. There are many there are many ways to do different things in the way we're doing it, but looking at it in different time and different ways of our use of time, and it's becoming more and more of an issue as we try to improve learning for kids. Uh, given the, the uh, weather issue we had this year, um, do, 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 we, do we run into a problem with having graduation for the high school um, before the snow days as opposed to after it? I mean, could, do we run into a problem with, because if you have, have to make aware of this, it's probably because high school seniors are going to run out of That's after, right? It's gonna be. So is it, does it make sense to move that back a week? You have to, and I think we'd want some fall in from U32. It hasn't been an issue, right? Well, in recent it, years. In recent years, it hasn't until this year. We're that close, but I, it is one of the pieces that's in there when we're thinking about everything that we're trying to do is trying to make that be. So, it's my impression there's going to, with school start time, school day, um, some in-service possible. If you look at the list that Bill put in his report, there, I think for this entire year, calendar and school start time, issues around this, I suspect, are gonna be ongoing through the year looking to make possible changes in a multitude of ways. So that could include a different uh, date for graduation in, in prep for the agendas, the prep for my last agenda, so everyone can endure what I'm saying if they want, I'm, I'm a lame duck here. Um, but school start time in and of itself in the school day, I, I suspect is going to be a pretty, in, in itself is a cultural shift, and it's going to take some outreach, um, if the committee recommends going that way, um, some community involvement, um, some discussion. So the discussion was around, is it better, uh, and, and Bill, you can chime yeah. in if you want, but is it better to look at a big comprehensive package of change and do it all at once, or is it better to take smaller bites and easy in? And there's advantages or disadvantages of both. But I think it's fair to say that the school calendar and how it affects student learning outcomes is a is a, a logical discussion this year because of the school start time and everything else. And whether everything's proposed together or not, it would make sense to explore all that in, in a comprehensive to start time calendar when in-service days are going to be, and do we make adjustments there, do we make graduation later, all those things. Uh, and I think all of them will require a lot of discussion and a lot of community involvement so that um, next spring, the SU board you know, doesn't vote to make all kinds of changes and the community is not well aware of it. So, I'm not trying to squelch discussion, but I, I would say it's preliminary to get too deep into this tonight, other than I think the intent was to make, and we can talk about it some more, but it's to make the executive committee aware of this will likely be a topic that will be explored further. 
And I, and I just wanted, the reason I wanted to bring it all up is really with the school start time starting to initiating their work, I had probably about three of the principals, maybe three that I can think of off the top of my head, may have been more, I've frankly forgotten. I can think of the three by name that I can remember, but said, hey, it's not just about start time. If we're really gonna go after time usage, we need to think about some other things as well. So that's why I put together the, what I did in my report for you, so you understand that goes into account. So it may potentially lead to a change of the charge to the school start time committee, conceivably. Could be an avenue to approach it and have them explore things other than just that. Again, it's it's more to think about. So as we move ahead, we'll have some ideas. We're not trying to resolve it tonight. Um, the only, can I just add some yep. things from the board? It's board perspective. So I just wanted to let all of you know, um, we'll, we're going to put, and I think I said this in everybody's local board meeting, but I'm just going to say it again here tonight. Um, two years ago, we put together, you remember the color-coded calendar we had out, for those of you that were here. Um, I had some feedback that since, because we had put that out, everyone scheduled themselves, and then when things changed, that was too much. You just, it, you can't, you know, don't, don't have the changes and have the calendar. And so this year we tried not having the calendar and that made more chaos. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna put out a calendar um, and I'm gonna put out with all the committees. Um, I handed you this as the membership of each committee. Some of them, I'm just, sorry, I'm just gonna take school quality. It, you know, school quality, I think everybody, there are a few new mem everyone has a member now on it, and hopefully that will become an SU committee. That would need to be a charge and a motion made at the next SU board meeting. It's currently AU32. But they, the people that have been there and they're still on that committee have said, hey, the third Thursday of the month is the time we want to meet. Every other month. Every other month. Every other month. So we'll try to calendar that. Some of these, like policy right now, is in conflict with the Berlin meeting but we'll do a doodle poll with the people that are on it and then get that on the calendar so people can see that. We're going into a negotiations year, and that's one of the reasons is that we're going to have to really know for when negotiations, for the folks that are on negotiations, that will be a, a little bit difficult. Um, and the school start time right now doesn't have a pattern. It has a deliberate pattern because we're trying to have the forms in such a way and then get some survey information through the end of, to, to the end of May. Um, so we're going to try to do all that, but I wanted you to see the folks that are on here and say the change in local meetings uh, last night, Rumney took the second Thursday of the month as their monthly meeting. So um, we don't have conflicts between local meetings. And what we're going to have to really look at is for the Washington, for this committee, the executive committee, to look for a time. And I think we've learned, at least I feel we've learned that meeting just as we are this month the week before the full board meeting is more productive for us than to meet an hour before the full board meeting um, and i see a lot of nods agreeing with that so um we're what i don't know for this group is if there can be a and i need some feedback from all of you is it better because we'll have carousel meetings i'm assuming still on uh the same pattern that we did this past year and I want to be clear on making that assumption, but that it's September, October, February, and June. March and June. March is, well, March we have the SU meeting. Is it necessarily a carousel meeting or not? I, oh, okay. I don't know, Stephen. It's the same with December. We have a budget meeting in December but okay. for the SU, but it's not necessarily a carousel meeting. Um, and if that's the case, it's looking at one of the months we don't have that. Do we have the executive committee on the fourth Wednesday, and the months that we do have a carousel, do we have it the the Wednesday before the third Wednesday? And I would appreciate feedback from this group and or thoughts or other ideas. Well, I can say from my perspective of building agendas, the way that we've evolved. So I won't talk specific days, but. Pulling it away from the same day as the full board meeting, 
I thought was good. <clears throat> doing it a week before the full board meeting, I think is good. Because then mm -hmm. the chair and the superintendent have a, have a framework of the agenda they're going to talk about. We can talk about it as the executive committee a week ahead of time. And for those of you who've been here, you know, we just come in, it's like a draft, and sometimes it's like, forget it, there's no way you're going to be able to do that, or things have changed, you know, legislature takes a vote, so we got to drop that, We got, you know, so we can fit in this new thing. So I've found it to be very effective. And if we had useful conversation or we were going long on some important stuff, we can if, right. if we're not backed up against the executive committee meeting and we're kind of rushing and cramming stuff in. So I don't know that. So I, for me, when there's an SU board meeting, the executive committee would meet the week before. And then you're just saying on the months when there wasn't one. I mean, that would be my recommendation. Yeah, that's, what, that's what I'm recommending. <clears throat> okay. But I, I just want to check with everybody if that works. I think it makes a lot of sense to you. Having that meeting an hour or a half an hour before the carousel makes for a long night, and it's kind of a, it's not a great meeting. Yeah, I always, <laughs> I, I always thought that it was helpful to yeah. her and just suddenly putting something together to put in front of the SU, and I like it much better <clears throat> meeting on a different day, night, whatever. It doesn't have to be a week before. It can be anything for me. So what Bill suggested for now, we're OK with. Okay. I mean, we might have to tweak those off. But I'll get, I'll, I'll get a calendar, and, yeah. and then Crystal do what she's always been doing, which is sending you digital appointments so you can put them in whatever device you like. Okay. And uh, you can keep yourself calendared. Or Okay, thank you. Two, three board goals. Um, the, the reason for putting it on here isn't so, the, the work is pretty much done. It went out in the packet. Uh, the last supervisory board packet had um, a list of potential goals. I, I want to say it was maybe like eight or 10. Um, we, made it, we, we just, Approached it at the last SU meeting to say over the next month to take a look at these. You know, we're going to dedicate a chunk of time in the next two SU meetings to really fine tune what the two, three, four goals might be for the, the supervisory board, excuse me, executive committee moving forward. Um, I think the, the main reason we have it on today is to talk about how we're going to do that. What's the format? How do we want to set up this discussion? You can go ahead. Can I get Kenny? Okay. Go ahead. I was just going to say that you know this this list was culled from various sources like board minutes and you know recommendations and various reports and so on. Um, but I, I think, I just want to check with you, Stephen, that we had basically talked about, we bring this forward, as we did to the SU board the last time, to, as a framework, but, but that we also were going to ask people to come to with any ideas they might have for, this may not be an exhaustive list, maybe people have other thoughts on things they want to focus on. Right, and I hope that came across, and, and may, I might suggest that you may open it, the discussion that way to say this is, not intended to be an exhausted, you know, this is a beginning. There may be something that's not on here that's important that doesn't show up. There's no reason why it can't be added and included in the discussion. So I, oh, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I, the, what I'm trying to do is set up um, the discussion about um, the uh, alignment might be too strong a word or the wrong word, but the that there's maybe some sort of linkage between the SU and the local goals. It doesn't mean there can't, there shouldn't be and can't be local goals, but that there's, you know, how do we, how do we do that work together and how do we support work together with the SU? So it has to be done really. I mean, I think we should. Yeah. I agree. So we can have that autonomy to do it. So I guess I'm really just, uh, I'm saying this out loud to like, so people will vet it. 
but basically there has to be some kind of introduction of like why we're <laughs> you know trying to set some goals, which maybe is self-evident to some, but not to everyone. But just saying that it helps to organize our work, we want to be able to monitor our progress more effectively, provides clarity to the leadership team, you know, so on and so forth. <coughs> Um, this is a list that we, a, a kind of a suggestive list that we came up with. Everyone has seen it. Um, and uh, then at that point, we probably solicit, you know, ideas from uh, someone who's going to Or people have questions about these. So we're going to put this, I'm looking back at the um, February superintendent's report, I think it's the last version. We're going to put this a version of this out in again. That's already gone out. Mm, well, it, it was in the last packet. Come on. I'm just saying when we send out the packet, yeah, I think we need to put it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We can put in the, the piece yeah. about please bring your ideas to enhance this list. But one of the things that the last version did was it categorized. And there's governance, engagement, and implementation plan and categories. Right. So if new things get suggested, they may or may not fit into these categories. I know school start time didn't quite fit into these, but there's something. Oh, we had other. We have had. Yeah, so it's another. We had another. Um, they, I guess I'm very, now going into the process that we're going to use. I don't know what your thoughts are about that, but do we want to? Vague, vague, vague and barely coalescing. Yeah. I think. That's do we, we want to try to have one from each group or some, something like that? Um, might, might be a recommendation. They're all important. You mean more categories. goals from each of these categories? Yeah, something like that. Bill, when you get, could you get email me a copy of those goals? I don't have it. Yeah, that'd be nice. That'd be great. Yeah, if I could just... yeah I'm not really sure because when I look at like engaging our communities, which is a category, and there's two bullets under it. One is community engagement and, and a sort of desire to do some professional development for board members around community engagement. And then the second one is a communication plan, essentially developing one, I would assume, auditing our current communication system and creating a, a plan. Um, that does seem to me like one goal. It could be one sense. goal. Yeah, yeah. It's not like each bullet is its own thing, necessarily. But. And I certainly think that all the schools could buy into the same thing. I think it's important for all of them. Mm -hmm. So that is a good um, thing for our alternative governance structure is combining our goals. Yeah, that's that the, particular goal. That's the other thing I'd like to say in the intro is that I, I the sort of ideal outcome is that um, all the boards would adopt in common at least a core set of goals. If individual boards have other things they want to focus on or you know look at or, or do as well, that, that's mm -hmm. obviously fine. But um, it's just so that there's harmony across the, the system, and I think you're right, Dorothy. I think that that uh, anything we can do to, to demonstrate, um, you know, sort of our working together. It's um, important right now. Effectively, yeah. Well, even above, above, above even that goal, I mean, it would, we benefit from this, all the communities. I agree with that completely. Yeah. yeah, yeah I just, you know, uh, if we can, uh, you know, I just, I have wondered, you know, if we can't, we should put some thought into how, you know, maybe we can engender, we can actually encourage some more community and, and engagement. And I just think about things like the Adamant Cup, you know, where we built that. They're very strong community people with simple little tricks. And maybe we could do that here. And this, that we, because that's one of the problems that we kind of face is people are not engaged quite enough, often enough. I don't know. If Until there's a crisis. Yeah, and, that, and that's understandable. Everybody's lives are busy yeah. and they do different things, but maybe there's some things that we can do that we kind of enable that a little bit more and in a fun kind of way. I'm not sure. So there's some good training that's being offered here in April to start to look at that. Yeah. We've got some good experts in our community when I think of Susan Clark and, oh. and the uh, folks um, with public, um, ask, public access um, group and some of the work that I've been doing uh, through I, my doctorate. I, I want to bring us back to our discussion, though. Right. The discussion right now is, do we want to pull specific goals from each category? And I would say no, because in my mind, those are just grouped to make it easier to 
digest them. Mm -hmm. It's not to suggest, it's not even to suggest that they all could come from one area. I think that's just informationally easier to, to digest. I don't know how others feel, but I wouldn't be inclined to say, let's pick one from each. So one of the things I wanted to bring back was one of the, I mean, there's many attributes of good goals, but one of the ones that it stays in my mind all the time is doability. Is it doable? So when you, if you're going to think about goals as a group, success breeds success. So what, you know, we've had some good successes. We've had good successes around the student learning outcomes. We've had successes around the monitoring. First year of doing it, we did what the goal was for that. We've had some successes around, uh, and we could start to look for those other pieces. What I wanted to ask, and when we think about it, take any of those categories or another one, what's our doability and where do we have time to do that? And in talking about who does what. So we can make a really, we have this great goal that we love to, that we really want to get done, but we can't either resource it either in time or or personnel support to make sure it happens. And so, or in, and when I say that, I mean board members as well, so not just school personnel. So it's just thinking about what can we do in the structures we have, in, this, in any structure. We have a different structure. We could redo the board meetings and things like that to make it happen, or subcommittees. But I just, I want to throw, because it, for me, the place I'd like to get to is most of the boards, but not all the boards, have a yearly work calendar. And they say, this is what we're going to do, and we use that to drive the agendas. And that usually drives the work that gets done. Um, and so when we start to think about this, I start to think in that same realm of what's the calendar look like with the meetings, either subcommittee meetings or issues. And I, I'm not trying to say our current structure has to limit us. I just want us to kind of think about that and doability. Realistic. Yeah. 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 So again, it goes to the meeting next week. How is this going to be presented, and how are we going to? How is this going to be managed? How is this going to be presented? How is this going to be run at the meeting? Because it, in, no, I'm going to let you. Go ahead, Matthew. I don't know. I think you're. You know. I, um, Well, I guess I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to presume that uh, whoever is the chair at the meeting <laughs> will need a... I think we'll call it I just don't want to be presumptuous. Um, so, yeah, let, let, let me just um, kind of read this and get, get your reaction, and then I'll come back to the one that I think is the least informed, which I think Stephen was just alluding to, which is how are we going to actually solicit and then possibly settle on... Um, you know, candidate goals, if you will. So, introduce the topic, talk about the importance of having goals, you know, why it's good for the, the system, our preference that goals be harmonized across uh, boards, and then the, or the origin of this list, kind of where it came from. Uh, then describe the process to the SE board, saying that, that the purpose of the discussion uh, that night is to solicit ideas from board members on other things that should be considered and then potentially to decide on some number of goals. Three seems logical, but it's really up to the, up to the board's dis discretion. Um, and the objective for that night is to, to decide on those, those goals, at which point the executive committee will then uh, do some work in consultation with the district boards uh, to, to work on finalizing the language of those goals over April and May, essentially. Uh, that we, with the goal of getting those out in a packet for our June carousel meeting and then voting to put those goals in place at that meeting. Um, at that point, we open the floor for people to suggest goals that should be on the list if they have something in mind. Um, then this is what I'll come back to, which is figuring out what we do then. Uh, and then at the end, we'd want, we'd want to vote essentially on, on the three of well, I think what agenda-wise we had discussed was um, having, so it would be accelerating your, your plan. Isn't that why we were talking about having local boards able to convene? Was it for board goals? No, it was for, for, for 46. Okay, never mind. Forget what I just said. 
So what would be the um, how would we winnow down? I mean, can I ask some goals? I mean, I, I know you've seen it in our history. Is that of, well, marking preferences? Or that's my, sure that's my first thought is the, is the dots. I, I think so, too. I've got that's plenty of them. Yeah. <laughs> i got plenty of dots. And I think it works well. I mean, you can kind of okay, see kind of of there. Think what the sense of the group is. You know, yeah. like, uh, so I don't know if anybody has a better idea, but if not, it's not. It's a factor that it's easy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, do we want to uh, at least, do we want to break down into categories and say we need to go from each of these different categories or just leave it wide open? So, you know, if the group says we all want to just concentrate on goals from this particular category, and I'm going from the categories of the three that are listed here, um, or is there a sense of this group that we'd like to work on goals from different topic areas because they're all important and it, it, rather than concentrate on one goal or, or multiple goals in one area. And, you know, that, it's not a wide open process actually if you can say, um, you know, the, whatever the, the full board as a whole votes for, that's what we'll do, okay. goal wise, as opposed to saying you have to, it's like pick one of, <coughs> one from each of these categories. Uh, and and I'm, I'm not offering an answer, I'm just. I guess what I would, what I would suggest maybe is that we we leave it open, but that we talk about that before sending mm -hmm. people loose with their dots and say, look, if you feel like board governance is the thing that you think we should be just spending 100% of our time on, and there's three things in there that you think you know are the, should be our top three priorities, then put them there. But just think about that. Okay. Then we're putting all of our eggs in one basket, essentially. That is smart. And you know what, what we could do to facilitate that? You, know, you break them into their groups, kind of, and then so you can vote it how you want. But it would make them easier to separate those category areas a little bit. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know, does that make sense? To, do we want to have, um, I don't know what it's called in the voting way, where you, yeah, you, you vote for, for one and, and it falls out over time and then you, you, you have a second choice and it goes so that you're, so that, so that you're getting it as, because a lot of people can put up a lot of goals and, and if you, you, get, you, know, you have one goal that has you know, four, but then a lot of others are three, two, two, one, one, one. You know, the four is not an overwhelming number of votes from the whole group. Um, do you want to have like a second round or? or you mean like having different colored dots? So yeah, red would be your first choice, you you can vote, yellow yeah. would be your second choice, and blue would be your third choice, and you get three dots. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. You know, they, they did, what kind of thing is that? Oh, you vote in It's like it was the old days, a town meeting. Yeah. I, I would suggest maybe that. Um, we could see how the, the first round goes, and if, there, if it seems like there's six that are evenly spread, then we can do a second to run off round. But it may be that three or four just emerge immediately as like the obvious. Okay, that's distance. probably the best way to do it. It's kind of what you usually have in those. You know, it's all the time. Well, <clears throat> it depends on how much conversation about each goal that there is. In other words, if we just put up the words and not say nothing, yeah. you might get one set of responses. But if a few sentences or something was talked about where this could go, it, yeah. it might. How much time do we have better. for this, Stephen? Just we decide. Since you're, you're, you're the best one to say, like, what takes what time, maybe. Well, this could take a long time if we let it. There has been, there are some boards that are going to meet after the SU meeting. Do we know? We, uh, well, I think Romney and sounds like we're sure from last night, right, Chris? Well, we could, yeah. We're going to meet Yeah. Uh, but I don't know of anyone that has to meet right now besides of that. So what I'm, typically we go 5.30 to 7. Um, conceivably, if we went 5.30 to 7.30, we'd have two hours instead of an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean, that's what we're doing is building the agenda now. Uh, SU reorganization shouldn't take any more than two or three minutes. Um, I don't anticipate, there's never been, the rogue candidates oh, to wear. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm just looking. So we're, you know, five minutes on that. The school calendar, 10, 15 minutes, because it's just, it's going to be this. 
it's been, I, I, at the SU board, I, I mean, I wouldn't recommend allowing it to get into a discussion, and kind of the way I chopped it here, go ahead and just, um, you know, perhaps it's Bill, but, you know, here's some things that we're gonna think about and talk about over the next year. School start time, length of the school day, different ways to configure, um, but we just want people to be aware of that. So conceiving those first two things, well, in the beginning, five, 10, 20 minutes, takes us through 2.2. .2. So then how much time do you want to spend? A superintendent evaluation is gonna take 15 minutes? Mm -hmm. I'll say so. Um, who knows on the Act 46 update? The 256 won't be on the full board, and 27 is not going to be on the supervisory board. I don't think that wasn't the plan. So, if that's a roundup, so 30, 45 minutes um, between board goals and Act 46. If we went an hour and a half, you'd have 45 minutes for those two things. If we went two hours, then you'd have an uh, hour and 15 minutes for those two things. Okay, so here's my suggestion. And again, I'm just brainstorming here. And I'm also floating this because all of you come from uh, district boards. So my, my sense of this would be to try to suggest that the SU board limit discussion so that we're not, we don't get into a free ranging conversation about what the goals mean or don't mean. Because the whole point of having April and May is to, to give space for that deliberative process to unfold. I'm planning to visit every district board again uh, in that period. So if, if every district board sets aside 20 minutes or something on one of those two agendas to discuss, we can have conversations if people have questions, you know, with each board and incorporate that into how we're drafting or wording the goals and then, you know, bring that back in June. So my, my, I guess my preference would be to try to manage, uh, the, you know, the, the process so that the conversation doesn't start to get philosophical about, you know, should it be worded this way or that way or what does this exactly mean? Or, but really just identify what people think are the priority topics that we should be. And, and I would think simplify little discussion, allocate 30 minutes. And you're thinking small groups, Matthew, to break out of I, I just My observation is we get into deeper discussions when they're small groups and there's reluctance, and I've been told this by some board members when we're in the whole group. To have a deep discussion? To have a discussion at all, actually, Chris. I've been told that by a couple of well, I guess because I'm, I'm thinking it's not really a time for deep discussion, I, I guess I was thinking that we wouldn't return. Then that's fine. Yeah. I just, I'm just trying to give you okay. kind of observation. Yeah. But if I you understand your point, though. But the goal should be clear in terms of what it means if people are, you know, because they're going to prioritize. And if it means something different and it only comes out later, it's like, oh, I didn't know this is what it meant. You know, just so at least have enough of a discussion that people know what they're voting on. My, I think if people have questions or they want to clarify something, like, yeah, then I think we should definitely do that. Because um, I think, I think you're, they're one of the things that was well thought of at this table was, and I think you go two ways, but I think the, the way, the first way I'll suggest is the way that my suggestion is, is to say, hey, we're going to break us up into three or four groups, or maybe six groups. And you two groups, we want you to look at this. You can put other goals down besides the area, but look at board governance. What might you write as a goal? You know, and come with your group and give us at least one goal on that. And if you've got other things in your group, go ahead and put them on the chart paper. Mm -hmm. You know, this other group engaging communities, what might you say that goal is? From what you've got some resource documents here that yeah. are given to you. If you have other things, put them on there. You know, or because because that way you'll you won't have as many global choices. If you want many global choices, you could tell you the small groups, write down whatever goals that you as a group think would be pertinent, and here are the resource documents. But you might have some repeats going on. That would be kind of worried, like, hey, we see a bunch, everyone's got a governance goal. We'll give that back to the executive committee. You guys try to massage that into a common goal. Mm -hmm. So I, I think you can go either way with that, but that just takes time. That won't work in 30 minutes. Yeah, no, that's, that's a 45 minute, minute. Yeah. that's a 45 minute activity right there. Right. Yeah, I mean, I guess my, 
and again, I'm sort of floating this to the group. I, my inclination with this, my personal inclination with this, is that um, it's more important almost that we have goals than that we get them exactly right this year anyway. I feel like because we haven't had really articulated goals in, in at least a couple of years. Yeah. And uh, so rather than kind of um, spend a tremendous amount of time sort of sorting through that, we, we have many goals we can choose from, I think, that are, that are valid and that have you know, some uh, rationale behind choosing them. Um, and we can create a process for next year that um, is maybe more deliberative and allows for more time starting earlier, for example, on our calendar. Um, but given that we only have two meetings, in, in essence, to accomplish this, I'm a little, little wary of, um, you know, I don't know what we're accomplishing is setting forth what the goal will be for the work next year. That's right. Well, because we're only talking about one-year goals at this right. point. What about um, limiting, <clears throat> say, you know, the executive committee has talked about various goals, and I like the point that you made is, is most important to have a goal, not necessarily which one we choose. Well, it's not like it doesn't and matter. It's, it's got to matter. It matters. It's what the goals are. Buy into if you well, yeah, but I, it has to matter. What I'm saying is shorten the choice to maybe three, four goals to the, the groups work on rather than have it really open-ended where people will be coming up with, with goals that may be good, but it's hard to focus when you have too many. Well, that, I guess that's why I'm suggesting that we, we start with this list. We say, you know, people have other suggestions they think are critical to add, yeah. but we don't, we don't want that to be open-ended or, or just, you know, a, a wide-open discussion. We say, we'll, we'll enter, you know, we'd like to entertain if there's another three or four things we want to put on here or something like that. People feel like yeah, they're just, or just missing. And then we immediately, you know, we sort of can have a little bit of discussion, but then we basically immediately move to the to the prioritization process where people are voting and saying like, well, this seems to me like the most important thing. Um, and then we identify the top three to five of those. And then again, in April and May, in conversation, we can tease out or something comes up in that conversation, you know, we can bring that back to the, because we're not deciding on anything, really. Um, at this well, meeting, we're just you know, you're not deciding what goals are going to be. Context of the context of conversation. Yeah. Deciding what's yeah. a smaller yeah. list. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That is true. And you want to start from a pre-formatted list from the February or the January? I mean, just literally get up there so people can vote. I think those. so. Yeah. I mean, those are easy to get on, and I don't need to know today. I will so let's send back to so. the February SU meeting. Yeah. The way this was rolled out was here's the list that the executive committee has put together. We expect all of you over the next month to go through this. If there are things that are important that aren't on here at the March meeting, we expect you to come prepared to say this should be on there. And this can be made clear in the board packet that goes out at the end of this week. For those of you that haven't had a chance yet, please make sure to do. So in my mind, a lot of the, dis the discussion and what potentially would happen in small groups sh shouldn't be or should be less necessary. For me, small groups are brainstorming. We've eliminated the brainstorming, and there's a short list, and then to that short list there might be, no, so this is just my take, there's, there's some more that might be added. But we're asking people to show up at next week's meeting with a pretty good idea of what their priorities are and base what they see. Mm -hmm. And then there can be some short discussion, like Matthew said, on clarifying or, geez, I'm not, these two goals look like the same thing, should we put them together? Or, I never thought about that new one that Rick suggested, can we talk a little bit about it? I think that's what you're saying. You manage that, and then you go up and put your stickers. Because what we're asking is board members to come with a pretty clear idea of if what they see there represents their three or four important goals, or if is there something else that you don't see there that needs to be added for everyone to consider. I would go so far as to even say have people get this to Krista 
that we say that they can physically be on all this. I mean, it actually saves a lot of time. There will still be a few new things that come up for me, but it, uh, you know, that, that puts a little imperative on them to do their homework. And I know it's, it's a thought that the board packets are going to be put together. Well, I don't know if the packets, but I think where I heard Rick, I heard you say something a little different. So they're almost up there on chart paper. That's it's like Rick, if Rick's got an idea, oh, okay. I can do something totally, I can do something totally facetious. But if Rick says, "Hey, our priority is to uh, purchase a Central Vermont Civic Center so we own the ice rink," you know that? How did you know? Yeah, how did I know? <laughs> um, please don't. Uh, don't, um, don't need another facility. Um, but you know that you would send that in and say, "Hey, make sure it's on the chart paper." So yeah, that's what I it's fine. That's exactly what I said. Okay. And it, it gets some thinking a little too. If they actually, I mean, if they if they actually respond and get it in here, you can be prepared instead of hand writing it before the fact. That is exactly what I was saying. Yeah, I guess what I, what I, I, I like, I agree with what you were both saying, and I think that the <clears throat> just to reiterate, I think what I'm looking at is expedience here because we only have the two as the meeting remaining this year to complete this process. I, I don't want, but it, it's the board's decision to do what they want to do. I, I, this would be my suggestion, though, is that we try to move expediently to, to finalize this. If we feel like a more proper process would involve more brainstorming and discussion and, and kind of uh, you know earlier engagement on developing the topics, then we should build that into our schedule for next year uh, so that we can get started in December, January, whatever it is. And, I just think that now we're at a point where you know, we don't, if, if the board wants to take that luxury, it can, but. Um, it seems smart. I mean, sure it be, I think, well, I think next, next Wednesday will give us the answer to that question for next year. I mean, we'll find out how much people are feeling, are they comfortable with the process or they, will they feel like it was too short? I think your, your approach is good. So we have consensus on the format. Yeah, I think it won't be small groups. Right. Matthew, assuming he gets elected, will we'll manage the discussion. I, um, I think the, the introduction will, will help and clarify the process. Some brief discussion is needed. People put the stickers up. If three or four just leap out, it's very clear that's the way people think. And that's what gets discussed at the local board meetings. I think what Matthew is suggesting being built in is what makes sense. Because then it gives the districts, the local boards, two meetings to chew on it a little bit and chew on specific language or Gee, it sounded good at the full board meeting, but we really don't know if we want to spend any time at all on that. Um, so that then in June, everyone comes back with two additional meetings and uh, hopefully some some clarity in the uh, June full board meeting. So there will be two, meet, two more full board meetings. So there's only one more so board meeting. Yeah. So you have yeah. two local two board local meetings. Board meetings. Yeah. So that's April and May. Yeah. I mean, that's where the difficulty yeah. I think can arise because they'll be speaking in isolation. Only if Matthew goes to all the board meetings, he really can do it. I think this can distribute information. I'm hoping I can get at least one more person to go with me. Okay. Yeah. Otherwise, it's going to be, you know, you have all these pockets of discussion and then come back in June to. That's where you're not going to have cross pollination, or people may be talking about the same goal in really different ways. Um, I guess that's, that's notionally in my head. Yeah. I'm getting to every meeting in April. Maybe one other person, Bill, obviously is is attending them all. Um, if there are questions like that that come up, and then we we ask the district boards to put them on their agendas for May to kind of sort through. Any questions like that? I there's some way to just have a repository of, okay, like these are both common, like a comment, um, have four goals set out, and this is people just blow comments. This is what we think this means, and just somehow. It's a little tough because yeah, I'm trying to think through the. Yeah, that's why I just open your so many questions. issues. I'd have to think it's about it. Like, can, can you, boards can't use electronic means to have a discussion, so they can't use Google Docs or something like that. Right. A bulletin board, are there any 
ways around that. I, I suggest we don't overthink it. I think I think there's a plan. I also think it, it is representation right here. It may well, not represent your board. So if you have a conversation, Chris at Romney, yeah. you can bring. You're going to be working on it here at the end of April and the end of May. And, that's, that's, and you can come back and give feedback and say, hey, right. I, I, I anticipate that being on the executive committee's main part of our agendas for April and May. Discussing the goals. Yeah. Okay. So that maybe that's more <laughs> I would make one last thing, and that just that when we get to the end of that discussion next Wednesday, I might just want to ask everybody, right, how comfortable were you with this? We debated, I mean, do, how do you want us to do this differently last year? Do we, can we do it like this, or do we need to take more time earlier so we can dig down in detail? They, they may be fine with it. We don't. Yeah, I guess I, I probably am more inclined to suggest that people think about that as we work our way through the process, April, May to the June meeting. And then That's fine. I, I, was, I, was I, think, I think it's a great idea. Yeah, maybe premature at this meeting to kind of ask people to comment on a process that hasn't quite yet unfolded. Yet. That's fine. So, yeah, whenever you think we kind of get to that end point. So uh, I, th I think we're at a good enough point where we know what's going to happen next week. Okay, so is there going to be a notice from Chris going out to board members with a pack like that email that she usually has as cover letter saying, if you have goals in mind, get them in. We're going to want a board like in bold so that people are aware. Okay, okay, thanks. All right, uh, 2.4, presentation of super evaluation summary card just needs a couple minutes. Yeah, so this is with regards to next Wednesday's meeting, the presentation of the uh, evaluation. So I just want to check with, with you all that we're on the same page. Um, my thought was to include the written report in the packet so all the board members have that, they can look at that. Um, I'll make the point, uh, well, if, if you'd like me to present the summary, I'm happy to do that on Wednesday. I would make start by making the point that it's somewhat unusual, certainly in my experience, to have this kind of summary presentation in an open session, just so people recognize that. I think that's, that's important. I would just prepare a few slides just to you know give the overview and answer any questions. It's not really meant to to reconduct the survey at all, or you know, the evaluation is basically what it is at this point. Um, but if people want to dig into the, the content of it, we may want to move into executive session because it might, it might get a little touchy, so I, I just want to say that. Uh, it went fine two years ago when we did it, but, um, uh, and that, yeah, that's, that's basically what I have in mind, so how does that sound? I think the plan was basically this, the same format as last time. Yeah, so less than five minutes of presentation, and then <coughs> the okay. after that. Sure. Okay. Uh, Act 46 update. So Matthew, can you handle this? Yeah, essentially, I don't think there should be any reason to have to discuss, you know, the hearing and or the process because you know, the email went out. I think every every district board meeting except for U32, I didn't get to this month because they strangely held it the day after town meeting. <laughs> didn't even sort of get my bearings before you guys were meeting. Um, but anyway, I, so I don't know if we'll need to discuss that too much, but what we, what we, Scott and Floor and I had felt that, um, we sort of came to a point where we felt like due diligence probably required us to uh, at least consider um, providing better answers to the secretary's questions about our efficiency study and our, our SPED study mm -hmm. because they were very direct and very specific and we did not have answers ready at that, that meeting. Um, so uh, we wor we've worked on drafting something. Uh, we've been working with Bill and Chris to try to kind of update where we are with all those recommendations. Mm -hmm. And the idea was that we were going to finalize that draft hopefully tomorrow or by, by Monday and we'll go out with the packet we can talk about it at the SU board meeting, and then if there's a, a sense that we want to communicate that to AOE as an addendum to our um, proposal or in response to those questions, then the, the district boards could, we could recess and the district boards can basically vote to do that. We didn't feel like it was our place to communicate anything further to AOE on behalf of the boards without their explicit approval to do so, which is why we proposed handling it like that. Um, so that's, that's kind of what the substance of that um, would be. It's essentially just saying, here's 
this is the, this is what happened with the spend study. This is what happened in the efficiency study. Here's all the recommendations, and here's the status of all of them. Essentially, just basically that. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for reminding me of my work. I'm gonna do that for you. No, no worries. Sir. No, are you? You've been you've been very gracious about saying I know what else is on your plate, so I just need to do that for you tomorrow. So it'll be in the packet or something. It should be. It should be in the packet. It needs to be in the packet so people have time to look at it. I, I haven't seen anything, but I'm just, I'm not anticipating that it's going to be controversial. It's just. You know, one of the questions was how many of the recommendations have you implemented from the efficiency study? So, I don't know. It's good. And, it's it's good. Good. and he already gave me it. I mean, it's not a lot of work, but it's just, it's going through, and the, the hardest one is actually going back to the SPED study because it's not, you know, the efficiency study had a nice list. Well, the SPED task force study that was done in 2011, everything's embedded in, within the narrative. So it's kind of like, okay, go pull it. It's very, uh, it's very you know, sort of ineffectively laid out. But, but still, the, the point of this upcoming meeting is to say, here we're, for the, the group of three, to say, here's the questions that we couldn't, we couldn't answer that the AOE asked. Here's what we're recommending the answers to those be. Any brief discussion, break up into the district, Recess going to the district. The district says, hopefully, um, yep, that's fine. That's what we agree the answer should be. We come back. We decide. Uh, you know, all the districts have said yes. That's what we want to go forward. Then those answers can go forward to AOE. Not, not a. And like I said, one of the questions was basically how many of the efficiency study recommendations have you. Done. That's it. You yeah. just count them. 16, 22, yeah, we, eight, whatever it is. Number and I didn't, I so I don't see that as controversial. It's just yeah. reporting the number that have been there. No, 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 no. Um, and the other question wasn't the same thing. It's just same thing with the spec set. What have you done? Yeah. So what does this fall on? It falls after the goals. And I'm just thinking of time frame. Um, whether, you know, just because it, it tends to be like we should do the goals first. Because people yeah. are hanging around. Well, well, tentatively, that's yeah. where okay. Thank you. That's where it's on the agenda now. Yeah. yeah. They're basically almost. Last. Yeah. Goals, goals is the last. Group evaluation and then goals yes. evaluation and then yeah. 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 okay. And what I would do is write agendas, work with the directors. Uh, you know, was for some like Cal State, there isn't anything else, so it'd be a one agenda item for some boards. Um, without going back to my notes, I can't remember everybody, but it would be, you know, you're gonna convene your local board, you'll do this, recess to finish the SU board, and then reconvene to do whatever other business you have. So again, it'll be towards the end, you know, tentatively, I'll budget around 30 minutes, but it may be. Just when you go through the process of recessing, convening, and everyone moves around, you know, you got to figure this out take a half hour yeah. just to, okay. All right. Um, so for the March 256. Sorry, I had a typo there. 256. Two Supervisory six. board agenda. I, I think we've set our, our agenda, I mean the discussion agenda. We rework, we do uh, school, we do the calendar. So reorg five calendar, we figured only like five. And then we do the board goals where we're looking 30, maybe a little longer, but 30 minutes. 40 minutes max. Superintendent evaluation, 15 minutes. So what are we looking at? 15, 30, an hour. And then if uh, Act 46 is 30 minutes, we're an hour and a half. So we're probably looking closer to a two hour potentially, although if the board goals and the Act 46 go quicker, I mean, probably what I recommend is the way we typically do it, have the local, well, the local boards will have to warn at 5.30 anyway. I'll try to look at the timing and get that set for yeah. when the recess, and then if anyone, if it looks like, and I'm just gonna, keep, Chris, I'm gonna keep using Roman because it's in my head from last night, I know at least we have that other resolution to talk about. Mm -hmm. Um, and you and I can work on that. Uh, but the, 
you know, to say, hey, you know, the first part, we're going to be doing the first part on Act 46 in the cafeteria, then the second part will move to room 12. You know, I'm just picking one out of the air, thin air. Okay. And we'll be there at 7. Ish. So is that okay for that Act 46 part? Does that make sense? Ish. Ish. Yeah, okay. Ish. So then on the agenda, we're also going to have a policy. No, next week? No. That's no, it's not our That's just for here. That's, that's for here. That's just for here. I wanted to report to you about it's part of the bill superintendent. Well, what about the, the school quality? Does that need to be on the agenda? That does because it's not an, it's not a, um, it, I think it will be an easy thing to do. Yeah. But it, it's really the SU board establishing a school quality committee and to help well, organize the monitoring of. So the minor reports. I think I can't all. remember if we actually have the charge from the. All right. What if we? What if? Move that. What if we under? What will be two one supervisor <coughs> union board reorganization? We tack that on. Okay. So, first, executive committee recommends this slate of officers, and um, super, the executive committee recommends that this U thirty two committee move to an SU committee. I mean, sound it like we already have the school I, I mean, so. I, I just don't. I, yeah, I think I don't I, anticipate I don't, I don't anyone saying anything against it. Again, I, I, you know, everyone I think gets Matthew provide a little lead in to say this has been a U32, but all the boards have um, representation. It, it just seems like it's done its course as a high school, and that and, should be the to the entire thing. district wide unit supervisor unit wide goal. Yeah. yeah. So we'll add it under me. Okay. And not to add to our agenda too much, but um, what about school start time? I believe they have their forum on Monday. They might know. Progress report? We don't even know if that's going to be a problem. They're going to have a second forum later on, so I would suggest. That. So maybe in this way. They're waiting well, forward. So, yeah, to speak to that, I was wondering if um, report, we're going to be, be raising all these calendar items. And it came up like, do we maybe want to think about having the school start time committee become a school time committee that would like look at all these different questions? But I think that given where the, that committee is in its process, yeah, they're right. This would, this would not be the meeting to do that. Yeah, we could say maybe we'll think about this down the line, maybe at the June meeting, maybe later. I don't know. Um, maybe give so, them serious time on in June to. Yeah, they got a lot of report back in June. Yeah, so the they charge. got so much going on like that. But they're listed under reports to the board. Yeah. So if they oh, okay. if they wanted to, typically they don't necessarily do a report, but we ask board members if you've got any questions. But you know they could do a one or two minute okay. update. Okay, that's good. Because they're in that list of however many groups, so they'll have an opportunity. Just to clarify, you're talking about having them. When you say a school time committee, you're talking about calendar, you're talking about start times. Any length of, length of day, to... how do we organize the week so we get teachers do it in the professional development? We think they so need uh, that's, all yeah. these things that, that may be a committee. So we definitely have to, give, we'd have to give them, where that's a significant increase in their task list, that, we, that would definitely need to be kind of calendared out in a way that's made. Yeah, for sure, yeah. So I think it makes sense to let them do their forms over the next few months and mm -hmm. June would be the time to... All right, um, so I think the agenda is pretty well set. Um, so let's go to 27 Supervisory Union Board Policy Development. And uh, for that, I'll uh, give it to Bill. It's, his superintendent. it's in his superintendent report, yeah. um, which wasn't in the packet. It was emailed. Was it emailed today? Uh, today or yesterday? Yesterday. 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 Okay. So that's just separate. Yeah. So all, I just wanted to bring up um, first. I, and I, the policy committee deserves a round of applause or celebration, and really getting to the place where all required policies for the first time in my tenure that were staying within a five-year review period, which is tremendous. Um, and some of the question of the policy committee is what's next? And in the efficiency study, we had a recommendation and it was under governance, so I believe this is a board piece because we're, this, not every, all the ones sitting here, but this 
group was very clear to me and along with the SU board saying, Bill, go work on anything that has in the operations and leave the governance to the boards. And so what I'm asking about is that for that group, the policy and trying to think about calendaring out their work for the next 12 months is thinking about, I can tell the recommended policies, but what other pieces do we need to work on um, in the non-required? And if you remember in Vermont School Board Association, there's required, uh, recommended to consider, and then there's consider. So the, I may not have the actual names correct, but there's kind of those three levels. The required are either required in federal or state statute, so we have to have them. Um, so those were in pretty good place with, we have two more to finish this spring and then we'll be there. Though the other ones are how much, you know, my real big question, essential question is how much unifying and do we want to get to what other policies? And, and, and I leave that just as I said it. Maybe that's the, maybe the first thing the committee should probably do is go through those, come up, work through a list of what they see as, you know, the highest priorities, and bring it right back to the, bring bring it back to a carousel, or bring it back to the boards. So what do you think? I mean, I don't know. Does that make sense? Could it could yeah. And that's let let the group fed a little bit, see if they agree, if they don't, tweak it. And well, how how many of the, there must be a myriad of policies. That, are not the same amongst the five schools and U32. So can we find a way to group them into like things and maybe have a, mm -hmm. some district-wide policies? Um, it'll take a while for mm -hmm. I it to change, but I, I think that helps us in proving that we're pre-K through 12 people interested in those, all the kids in one fell swoop. And I'm sure there are policies in Calus that do or do not exist in Worcester or and vice versa. Oh yes, versa. oh yes. So I somehow, that's true. I trip over them all the time. Right. Well, maybe, maybe we need, maybe, I don't know where these policies all reside, but maybe each elementary school or each school board needs to have a list of their policies, and then someone or a few people, not necessarily the policy committee, try to coordinate them and then give it to the policy committee. But uh, it seems to me there must be a way to begin to get it coordinated. It might be a summer intern. I no, I'm thinking that was, I think that was done. Um, not since five, five years or so. No, we've only done the required since I've been here because it's been such a mon monumentous task that it, um, it's one I've, it was trying to make, it's back to making something doable, so it's like, let's just go after the required policies right now. So we're there, so now it's going, it's looking beyond that, and um, start looking at that work. Yeah, I remember it was Linda Beaufry that did that years ago. Yeah, I thought so, yeah. But it was probably almost eight or 10 years ago. Okay. So what's happened is, is things have changed. Right, okay. <laughs> really? <Yeah. laughs> really? But going back to the efficiency study, wasn't one of the recommendations to come up with a single set of policies? So I'm, I'm totally in favor of moving in that direction. And maybe the next step is to go through the recommended, right? Because we've done the required now. Is what required. And the next level, logically, would be recommended as doable. Yeah. I, I, I think it's kind of silly to have necessarily. I mean, I love that in the general sense, but I think it's silly to say that we're going to have a single set of policies because, you know, there are differences in towns and they may want to have policies that are unique to their circumstance. Well, I'm not saying they, they can't. Have. I was yeah. just saying there should be some policies yeah. that can be uniform. A lot of them, yeah, probably can. And I guess one policy would be if there's going to be a deviation, like there ought to be a rationale for that or sort of like a stated reason or, you know, preferably speaking, like... Um, if it's a deviation or it's a... No, or just a different Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I'm not that sure why towns have to justify something they felt was important to them. You know, but you know, I don't. You know, we can. So, yeah, I mean, to me, it's a kind of like. Who? To who. I, it's, I guess it's worth. Apparently, there's some discussion to be had about it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so, from having 
the realism of having served on the policy committee um, and wanting to capitalize on the momentum that the policy committee has generated. Perhaps um, what we could ask them to do is look at the recommended policies. Mm -hmm. Look at the recommended policies of, that are the same and the recommended policies that are different. So the ones that are already the same, conceivably we can just tackle and bring those through and, and make them current, right? Same, and then, same to ones that are already in existence in local schools, or same as to what? What do you mean that so are the same? So all the, all the schools have this policy, and it's the same, but it should have been reviewed two years ago. <coughs> it's the same, it's written the same, bring it forward. So you're saying there are none of those? I don't know. Oh, I well, got, that's what I'm saying. I don't know. I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, want, I don't want to say <laughs> others are going to do work before the policy committee does. And you can all disagree with me, but that means nothing gets done. Right. But, so I want it to be, I, so we, we ask the policy committee, it, if they're the same and it's outdated, bring that same policy, just like ones have come to the SU board, we say, the com policy committee says this policy is the same in all the schools. Just needs to be uh, uh, had of reading so that we can say we've reviewed it, you know, within the specified time. And then look at the ones that are different and allow the policy committee to say these three policies are different. We've talked about it in the policy committee. We can't come up with any rationale on why they're different. And we'd like to propose that we tackle the, you know, here's the language that we think should go. But at that point, you maybe refer to the local board and say, board why board. are they different? Why do you, well, why but, do you have this language? But you've got a rep, board? each board ha should have an active rep on the policy mm -hmm. committee. So I, I, well, I'm seeing Bill shake his head. So, so, so I know I, I probably shouldn't move because I'm not shaking to me again. Oh, but anyway, or not. <laughs> please do not move in. I'll, I'll ahead, speak then. when I. <laughs> my, my sense is that the policy committee was given something of a charge four years ago, which was self de self developed. Self developed. Okay, so even yeah, all right. So self developed charge to review all the required policies and make sure that they were uh, compliant with law and uniform. Is that fair? Yes. To say? Yes. And they're within two policies of completing that self-imposed charge. So there's some question about what is the policy committee supposed to be doing? So it seems like a, a charge for the policy committee is appropriate, right? Um, mm -hmm. Okay. And who is the chair of the policy committee? There is none. That's kind of odd. Actually, okay. there should be, but there isn't one. All right. We're just going to all sit down and do the work, don't worry, Chris. Which it seems, I mean, to me, it seems pretty fair where we go. I mean, I like the idea of looking, you know, we'll try to look at all the policies that are out there, look at what we commonly have. And if they're different, you know, we're probably going to have some policies in there that are different, but I mean, the same policy, but different work. I mean, I'll bet most towns, you know, we could, we could propose something that was Common, looking at all of them, and then put the just put it in front of the town. Say, would you be willing to change? My experience has been it's it's been style over substance. The differences have yeah. just been yeah. I know. Some are a little wordier than others. I have a feeling this this is probably going to be pretty easy in ninety nine percent of yeah, cases. I think so. To clean up, not a lot of substantive difference. Yeah. Really. And I, you know, where I would see the difference, I could see maybe one town, you know, or a town that might have a policy that the others just don't have. For whatever reason, it might be based in need. I wouldn't see a problem with that, but I might see a problem. That's that's why I'd want to have some conversation, conversation about it. Why is that a problem? I guess it depends. You know, it depends a little bit on the type of policy. But I think that the policies that we have in place are expressions of our collective, um, you know, sort of point of view and intent with how schools should be run and how education should be delivered. Okay, but so we're say, say one thing as a policy that uh, we're going to support the uh, vehicle sugar in house, which we do, uh, and that is going to be part of our curriculum. I mean, you know, I would be appalled if the supervisor you would say, no, Romney, you cannot have a maple sugar in policy, and you cannot make it mm -hmm. part of your curriculum. Yeah, I understand you. I guess I would just want to. Um, I don't know. I mean, is the maple sugaring, you know, done at the expense of any other thing? 
it's like sort of considered to be it's in critical. And you know, you can probably say that for every individually cultural thing that any school develops and say, well, you know, it's spaghetti dinners on Friday nights. You could be almost done in that, and that's not a great <laughs> idea. So we can squat your uh, policy of going to. And it actually does incorporate, you know, the kids go out, uh, they, they measure things, they see how the, the process works. So it does incorporate this, um, educational aspects. Um, but, you know, this is, this is that place where we, we actually have an opportunity to kind of represent the individual, individuality of the towns. And, and it really probably doesn't have a lot of impact. You know, that, that's something we want to do. You know, what, what people don't like, myself included, and many others here, is that white vanilla, not based on the reality of the situation, but rather we just want everything to work the same. That's not good. And in situations, I mean, I see it in State Government, I see it in other places, you know, situations change from place to place. So. You yeah, need, no, you I mean, I understand. I, you know, I, I, I'm, I kind of would champion that this is a larger discussion than we can possibly yeah, have. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm a champion of like differentiation and, and uh, individuality. Um, but if it doesn't happen in a context of what, that we know actually what the things we want to have in common and that are to some extent inviolable, if we don't know what those are, and then individualization and, and sort of uh, um, customization is happening just sort of on its own, on an ad hoc basis, and no one, you know, it's up to us to do whatever we want, you know, then I think it, it has the potential to, you know, sort of throw a wrench in the gears of maybe what we might all want if we actually sat well, down and talked to them. So to me, this, um, the discussion becomes policy procedure. So we'll use the maple sugar thing as mm -hmm. an example. Um, it's great that Rowan does a maple sugar thing, and it's important. So maybe the SU should have a policy that we all have, and, and I'm making this up, it's not, the specifics aren't for discussion, but we value um, the, the natural Vermont environment, and we want our students to have an appreciation for the, the natural environment and schools are expected to integrate into their curriculum, you know, Outdoor. interaction with the natural environment. I don't know. Yeah. And what Romney does, so that's the policy. Romney's procedures on that policy are we run a sugar house and the students tap the trees and boom, boom, boom. And East Montpelier builds birds' nests and puts them in the trees and, and Okay, so the policy is across the SU, how each, the procedures that each community use reflects their individual thing. Um, so that's one side of it. But to go back to what Chris was saying earlier, I think a lot of these, if, if we just ask the policy committee, you know, Take a look at these policies and how many of them are essentially the same thing. And there's just a few words different, or the paragraphs are in different order, whatever it is. And let's take the easy ones, get those, and if, if we can agree to clean those up so they're the same, and it just simplifies things and makes it easier, makes it more understandable, do those easy ones, and then just continue to work from there. I agree. I mean, that, that's... Do that, get the low hanging fruit and work our way through it. I guess, I guess what I would, um, what I'm, the question I'm asking is, um, does the policy committee need a charge? And if they do, you know, should we try to develop one for the junior meetings so that, you know, it may be to review the, the next stage policies or it's, uh, mm -hmm. you know, take a look at some of these questions that we're raising or, you know. It's, so we could put it on one of the executive committee. I'm trying to be mindful of time. We could yeah. add it to an executive and I would say, agenda with sufficient time. Yeah, I don't think this needs to be answered tonight. That was not my, my point in raising it was to get the discussion that we have going going. But I think by the end of the year, there's going to need to be a, because next year, I don't see if it's only the required policies, and this part, this goes into the calendar that I was talking about earlier, I don't see a lot of work for the policy committee. When does that, what's what the, the, the five-year, 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 do you know, when, when, when something Stephen suggested to the group, and they all jumped on, let's use 
a five year, let's make sure that yeah, we review them within five years. So does that, the question would be is, you know, are they, those are obviously staggered, you only do so many years, so we're gonna have more rolling back in for review, probably not, that's not I'd have to go back and look at the matrix, Krista has it in her, and I have it in my but, notebook. But what happens procedurally is that the more policies that are the same, the simpler the process is. So the policy committee can say, this policy is the same across the entire issue, it's been five years, it's time to review, um, the legislature has said we need to strike paragraph D, it's in the law, so we're striking paragraph D. It comes to the full board, policy committee says we've reviewed the law, we've made the recommended changes, we recommend that this policy um, be approved, we do a read, we do the second read approved. It doesn't require the old way where it went to the policy committee, went back to the districts, districts had it for a while, came back to the policy committee, the policy committee member from East Montpelier is not there, so then you can't talk about, you know. All right, we've all, I think we've had a chance to talk. So what I'm gonna say is we add it to an agenda in, mm -hmm. in um, April or May with sufficient time to have a meaningful discussion yeah. with the yeah. thought of essentially the agenda item would be what should the charge to the, to the policy committee be. Okay. Um, do we have any board orders? There should be some. Did Chris get it to you? No, I don't look like that. Okay. Um, well, what I'm going to do then, I'm going to jump to 4.3 while Bill's away, if no one objects, and go to yeah. the financial report on page 7, because Lori's here, and yeah. um, um, Bill usually defers to her anyway. Okay, so I'll give you the highlights. Um, obviously, we changed um, some of the... Uh, revenue and expenses for things that pass through here, like the state place students um, and the um, special education. So those didn't affect the fund balance, but where I wanted to kind of share some of the good news with you was if you look down at the revenues, you'll see in March of 2018, um, there is a projected surplus for purchase discount of $9,575. And what that is, is by paying our bus contract um, according to a, an earlier term, and then we do get additional revenue back for that. So the total is $9,500. Um, so far, so good? Um, yeah, the other, more of those kind of things. Yeah, okay, okay, so interesting comes another way. Um, we have generated a projected $7,000 more in interest income than what we were planning on. So we've had good cash flow management here. And then um, the benefits you've probably heard about at your school where we pay benefits and for district employees and the schools pay us back. So that's a wash, so no new revenue there because really it's you'll see the expense down below. Do you see that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you probably have had those at your school for shared staff. And the other piece that um, Bill and I talked about updating was back in October 2015, um, the Act 46 study committee um, costs were projected to come out of our budget, but we had been keeping a 5,000 reserve, and based on the last consultant that was hired, um, we are projecting to need $6,000 to cover the cost um, for that. So all totaled. Is that for the survey? Um, no, I don't have the vendor name. Yeah, it was the, the last facilitation days. round, yes. Okay. I don't have their name right here in front of me, but I can look it up. So all totaled with that additional revenue that is the good news and that spending, the fund balance went up by um, $10,575 from last month. And so it's a 2.4%. It had been 2.2%. Um, we haven't even begun to close down the year yet, so um, obviously I'm hoping the good news continues. Um, one of the areas Bill asked me to note over to the left down there is that I haven't shown any savings from the job coaching that we're planning to roll into a future year, um, but it's currently projected at $42,000 um, for the job coaching budget that we had this year. We, we had a budget of $80,000 and we have about 42000 that looks like we're going to carry it into next year. And then that mean because we didn't hire someone or? It's, um, the principals are working on a, a plan for its use for next year. Okay. And some of the, it's like training and professional development as well as um, some staff. So Chris, that, if I can interrupt for a minute, mm -hmm. Lori, that remains a priority for the executive committee. Mm -hmm. But what we heard this year 
was there was difficulty implementing it in just a straight hire. Okay. So they did it. They did it differently, and the executive group is working collectively on how they want to make a recommendation to go forward. So rather than just spend it and not have it, okay. Who's going to make a recommendation? Leadership team. Okay, so sorry about that. So we were just covering the job coaching and the yeah. professional yeah. development and the carryover. Yeah, and I would tell you that we're more on track this year. We're looking at doing something a little bit. We want to have one job or two job coaches. We're going to be using it fractionally, though. But we are on track mm -hmm. to fill those things. Um, so then if you turn the page, um, you will see, um, I'm just going to touch on the highlights because some of you are new. Um, we have the Office of Equipment and Technology Fund where, you know, we've tried to budget so that over time we don't need to spike our budget for servers, et cetera. Um, you'll see the current projected balance is 141981 at this time. Um, you'll see where we're starting to save for the financial system we've been talking about. So um, this year we put away 100000 um, and we do have 100000 in next year's budget as well. Under the capital fund, um, last month you gave me some feedback and I tried to put that in. Um, you'll see over on the notes on the right that we've put in um, 10,000 and 10,200 for carpet replacement this year. The painting project, which looks absolutely fabulous and mm -hmm. floor deserves a big kudos for volunteering our time. Um, but we've actually paid out 13,000 for that and it's not totally done yet. There's still some more work to be done in here, et cetera, um, for a couple more thousand. So those are the two big projects in our planned capital uh, budget for this year. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, you just asked me to note down below under administrative agent fiscal fee, what would those funds be used for? And it is staff time. So did I touch on the notes you gave me for feedback? Was that clear enough for everybody? Okay. Um, I think Bill just identified that um, I'll talk to Ann Carr tomorrow because you didn't have a warrant tonight and there was one dated February 21st. So I will uh, follow up. Unfortunately, you would need to double up next month. So if you could put that in the minutes, let the warrant have a specific warrant. Um, but I would, I would suggest that you put in the minutes that the warrant um, dated February 21st was not here. Actually, the 28th, I just got it. She oh, you did just get it? me where it was. Oh, okay. Did, you did have okay, February let's... 28th warrant is here. Okay, so we don't have to do two next month. Okay, I was trying to put it on the We'll have we'll to do the March and the... Right, but we only have a single month. Yeah. So I think that was the financial update. Thank you. Any questions Thank you. for Lori? Mm -mm. <clears throat> So um, board orders are going around. I'll jump back up to 3-2. Do we have any resignations? No. Okay. Do we have any approval of non-renewal for teachers? Not for teachers. I would like to talk to you again. Executive session? Yes. This entire group? And yes. Okay. So 3-3. Three, three, and Marty as well. We'll hold 3-3 three, three till the end for executive session. Um, I'm anticipating it's a personnel matter. Yes. Um, 4.1 superintendent report. Bill's already given a chunk of it. I don't know if anyone has any questions or if there's anything additional you wanted to highlight in your report. No, I mean, you've all heard of me about kids and what kids have been doing, and I've just been elated. Well, I don't know if everyone's heard your, your views, of particularly like the U32 and- Yeah, I mean, I said that I'm just really proud. I mean, Kari, I know you were there that night, and I really, with uh, Lucy and the way she said, this is us, it's not the board, it's not the adults, it's the kids. And where I really respect everyone has a diversity of opinion. And we know that in our student body and we'll respect that. And that was shown yesterday outside of U32 in a really nice way. And uh, they, you know, for those who did participate, they did. And for those who didn't, they were in class. And I got feedback from Steve last night too. And yeah. He was equally proud on how the students yeah. managed it and essentially self. They managed the entire. They process. did the whole thing themselves. And he, mm -hmm. he said thing. it couldn't have been handled with more dignity yeah. and, and more respect, regardless of which, where you fell. Each group respected the other, and yeah. it, it was just everyone kind of got to have their say and their input and participation and it was handled marvelously from Steve's as, point of view. As I said at the Cal's board meeting, I think this is a reflection of our 
whole mm -hmm. you know, supervisory on you know, education, mm -hmm. um, that these students were that well informed and did as you said. They're they respectful. Really they're respectful. Respect. It's yeah. really the respectfulness. I mean, yeah. Car, I've been saying you haven't heard me at other board meetings, yeah. but since you're 32, I've been saying I was ready to hand Lucy and I. I can't remember the other girl's name, and I should. Well, Shannon. Shannon, a degree right there. Like, you guys got it. You <clears throat> met, you met yeah. our mission. And when we were you there, we had another student just came and spoke to the board um, of our own volition. Which yeah. Was really eloquent. Yeah. Passionate. Yeah, and there's, there was a pat yesterday, there was a really <clears throat> passionate read of a poem. Um, and I wish I could remember the girl's name, but I can't. And she did a, just a tremendous job. And, uh, but just, you know, it, it it's showing evidence of our mission being I can say this correctly, but becoming real. And I'll say it that said the word I had in my head. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. You know, it's this, partly these times are driving us and it's this is where the education is showing up. It's you know, this is cause and effect from what's happening in our country. You know? mm -hmm. yeah. Deviation. I think the kids, the kids and many adults are reacting this way. It's good. It is. I, and I, but I've seen it go other ways as well, mm -hmm. without respecting others' opinion. And that—that's the real key to me. There are kids, is that they're being extremely respectful of each other and know they have a diversity of opinion, and that's fine with them. And that's what to me is so powerful. It's not that they're saying I have an opinion and I want to voice over you. It's no, I have an opinion and you have an opinion, and it's fine if we're different, and we should talk about it. But we don't need to, we need to be respectful of it. And that's they just, certainly worked that, hard learning that from Congress. Uh, no. <laughs> well, they're seeing where it leads. Yeah. It's yeah. yeah. They're seeing you know, the results. It's a lesson. It's a lesson in life. And it's, 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 it's good. It's, but it's good that they've been prepared this way because he's going to be doing a good job. Yeah. Um, moving on to 4.2, on to lessen the impact of what you deserve. We need to continue directive reports on page 6. Um, I don't know if there are any questions. It, it, was, it seemed to me to be organized around standardized tests that are being given in what groups um, are getting them. And, and well, there's some new things that are coming through the federal test. legislation. Yeah. New testing? Yeah. In Vermont, you will, Vermont's probably one of the few states in the nation that, um, if you've heard any of this, the nationwide talk, it's like, well, with the new, with it's pronounced ESSA, but the Elementary and Secondary School Act, that things have gotten, they aren't as restrictive as they were under No Child Left Behind. Vermont, as you know, never went for a race for the top application. Because of this, it's more restrictive for us. Because we, not because we didn't go for it, but when you went for a race for the top and your state had it, you had a lot more regulation up, put on top of you as a state. And with the elementary, secondary, and sec, a school act, it took some, it took a great deal of that off. Mm -hmm. But because we didn't do the first that first step for the race to the top, we're still having to step up because there's more regulation than there was with just no child left behind. So we're having some pretty, we were around this table today talking about. How things are being tighter. Just uh, sampling. Uh, sampling in the assessment side is that Vermont had to identify other two other measures. Um, had to measure two other measures that would be an accountability, and one had to be uh, a climate measure. And so most states had this, but Vermont will have a unified climate survey that goes out to students and staff. And it won't be, you can add to it, but you have to carry the main questions. Um, we have to add a physical fitness. We are already doing it. In this issue, it's not a big deal because we are already doing fitness gram as a local assessment, mm -hmm. but that is now universal across the state. And physical fitness will be a piece of an accountability. Yeah. Whether, you know, whether you feel that, that's just where it is. And um, so there are some pieces, those are new assessments and you know, we, as all of you saw the results from our um, integrated field review, there are pieces there that you know, we weren't used to before and being assessed every year. Every year there will be a quantitative assessment from data that we already send to the state. And then what you saw last year with the integrated field review will happen every three years with a quantitative piece of that as well. So it means there's, uh, and there'll be a lot more restrictions on use of federal funds 
um, and we know they're lowering, they're also lowering at the same time, and um, a lot more, um, I think auditing is probably the best word, would you say, mm -hmm. Laura, of ensuring that they're being used correctly. So there'll be a lot more required back office support to make sure and documentation and record keeping of that. Of course there will. <laughs> We're trying not to push that on to anyone. Unfunded man. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Any questions of the director's report? No. So I'm going to go back to 3 1 and approve board orders. So I'll make a motion that we approve board orders in a total of $411,829.96. Well, need you to go a little bit slower than that. 411829 uh -huh. and 96. 96. Okay, thank you. I have a second. Second. Discussion. All those in favor of approving the board order in the amount of, as mentioned, <laughs> signify by saying aye. 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 Proposed extensions. Thank you. Um, then I propose at 712, we move into executive session to discuss a personnel matter. And we. You said you'd like Lori. I'd like Lori to be here. So, for everyone else, um, we would ask you to feel free to pack your stuff and go.